Hello, my name is Ben Martinez, and uh, this is our final uh, build review video for uh, game balancing. So I was tasked with working on um, the main menu and then just the UI in general for the game. So I'll be starting us off um, with the first uh, showing of the project, I guess. And for this uh, sprint specifically, uh, things that I worked on were the volume settings, I'll go on some issues with that, uh, resource and progress bar displays, and then the uh, game instance. This was used to uh, save like certain variables, like some of the resources and stuff that you mine throughout the game and carry them over to new levels as you play through them. So going back through here, just can go through this menu real quick, new game. Uh, brings up the option if you want to play the tutorial or not, clicking yes. Now if she starts that off, that will be explained a little later. And then going, clicking on no, will just open you into the main steel vulture level. And level select this is the different uh mechanic levels that we made in the previous class just showing these off here controls this is a placeholder we've added more uh key bindings and stuff but uh this is just a placeholder for now so be updated uh volume this is one of the things that uh i was having issues with uh previously but i was able to get that fixed for this sprint so just changing it and it saves whatever you set it to. Credits, everyone here, and the radar. And then quit game, obviously close the program. And real quick before I go, I'm gonna go into the regular steel vulture level and show up a couple of the things that I was working on. So for instance, the the progress bar displays that was these radio bars here that's what uh, that task was referring to um these used to be just regular uh default progress bars like the one up top but um each of these are the ship's health oxygen and then the npc uh health and then stamina and also a thing that i did was just displaying these right here and then the different conversions and stuff like that and also, real quick before I go, I'm going to run through one of, actually before I do that, I'm going to go through the pause menu. This is resume. Options, just like before. It saves whatever you set it to. Controls, same image, image as the main menu. Uh, this will also be updated. And main menu, as you've seen multiple times, takes you back to the, the uh, main menu of the game. So then I'm just going to run through this real quick. Uh, this radar will be explained. I wasn't uh, tasked to work on this. Someone else will come in and explain that. I'm going to run through this real quick to show uh, level transitions and then also my uh, game instance uh, task that I was working on. So I'm just going to go collect these. For the game instance, what that's going to do is take uh, the materials that the player collected and carry them over to the uh, next level. So, yeah, this looks like enough. I'm going to convert these. I also worked on the conversion uh, logic for this as well. So, clicking on these buttons will take 10 away from this and convert it into scrap. Scrap is what you would need to get to the next level. As you can see for the stamina as uh, the NPC is walking, it shows uh, mid depleting. And 
for this. Every time you right click on this, it takes Tenscraft from here, loads it into this bar up here. And once this is full, there's a little button here that comes up. You click on that, it shows a little map. This is something else I also worked on as well. Um, clicking on one of these will load into uh, the next level. And then for the game instance, uh, it's going to save these variables and take along with you. So we have 0, 10, 13, 22. Clicking on one of these, loads a new level, 0, 10, 13, 22. And that's all I have for now. I'll be back later to show uh, the win condition and then also something else that I did with the game instance. Thanks for watching. Hello, my name is Michael Trowbridge, and I'm going to go over the final sprint uh, for game balancing on the Steel Vulture uh, project. Um, I was in charge of creating the tutorial level, uh, or levels, I should say. Uh, it started out being four different levels, which one of them was completed last sprint. Um, the other three were going to be completed this sprint. Uh, and they were completed, but they were also compiled into two different levels instead of four. Um, so the tasks will still have them split up and uh, showing what that tutorial level needs, uh, but they were actually put into the first two uh, tutorials that were made. So let's go ahead and get the project open and... Uh, Check it out. Just going to turn that down to make sure you can still hear me. All right. Um, now, Ben is showing off the menu, uh, but if you click New Game, it'll pop this. Th uh, this window up and if you press yes it will go to the first of the two tutorial levels so we're going to start with that uh, there are the uh, most of the tutorial is like this kind of prompt uh, system that i had to create uh, but technically that was created during the first sprint um, so i'm not going to show that off too much especially the wording uh, this is Again, it's it's mainly story stuff. Um, once we get to some of the direction, uh, it actually switches to a different prompt so that I can have the player uh, do that task while while the prompt is still on screen. Unlike this large prompt, the large prompt you have to click through it. Um, yes. Okay. Like uh, for instance, this one. Um, it's telling the player that they need to do these four things to move on. Uh, click any of the directional keys. So I click on one of those, complete. Uh, move the cursor to, the, to an asteroid. Why not? There we go, complete. It even gives you a nice little scan readout. Click the left bulb in between the arrows to move the ship. Move the ship, complete. And left click the center button to center the cursor on the ship. Ooh. Cursor centered and it was completed. Now it's telling you asteroids can be mined for resources, uh, but we need to check the camera function first. So as soon as you press back, uh, the prop comes up, giving more um, narrative. And then finally, uh, it unlocks these buttons for you. And when you press one, it goes to the next prompt. Uh, that's one of the only timed ones, uh, but I wanted time for them to see the room before it just put this huge box in their way. Uh, this is informational, including uh, you have to left click the target when the target turns white. Now, I actually did not leave the radar with uh, an asteroid, and it says that at the top, target an asteroid from the radar to be able to do this portion. Let's go target this asteroid again. All right, now that we have the asteroid uh, scanned, the red thing pops up here, and as it says, left click on it when it turns white. Boom. Okay. Weapons calibrated. 
Uh, it's going to go through some more information. Uh, like one of the biggest things is this sentence right here. Uh, it says like you need to destroy asteroids to get resources, but we don't have time. Or like, you know, still vulture doesn't have time. Narratively, it makes sense. Uh, but this is actually in there because I physically didn't have enough time to show off um, the resources coming out of an asteroid and you having to go pick them up. Uh, and a big reason behind that was actually because that was being developed. Uh, I didn't, I didn't have it in the tutorial level yet. Uh, through some of this. Once complete, it's going to check the drive for charge. Uh, now this in game normally has to be filled up by your character, Steve here, uh, filling it up. But there was a mechanic in place just to fill that up during game, make it nice and smooth, uh, stupid sound effect, whatever, uh, just so it shows like, hey, you're, you're charging this up. And then once charged up, you can press this button to go to the next level. Now, in this case, and only this case, this, it takes you to the second tutorial level. So here we are again, second level. Uh, that's technically, I guess, the win condition for the first tutorial too. There is no lose condition. Um, it's a tutorial. I, I cannot have the players lose uh, in any shape or form uh, because they, they need to learn these objects before they can lose. Now, overall, the entire two tutorial levels, it does have a lose condition. It's it's really hard to do, honestly. Uh, but at the very end of this second part, which is the end of the tutorial, after they have already learned everything, there is a way uh, to die. Uh, and basically just by running out of oxygen. Because in this tutorial, you cannot uh, select the radar. That is, you, ca you can't get into the radar and move the ship around. So you can't really crash into things because there's nothing, there's nothing out there in this level. Uh, but you can still run out of oxygen if you don't do the very last task uh, in a certain amount of time. Uh, but here uh, we have a sequence that Steve will kind of do his own thing. He just woke up narratively. He just woke up from whatever uh, concussion he just had. Uh, and it's going to go through some stuff. Uh, also added this nice new little camera to kind of get up nice and close and personal to Steve. And the computer is going to directly talk to Steve. Um, there you go. There's what should be on his screen. He's going to do this stupid uh, typing effect. Uh, my, my arm is broken. Uh, there's a funny response and all this other stuff. Uh, but it, this goes on back and forth uh, for a couple of uh, slides like this. But again, um, wording, not important. It's mainly just I need, uh, once the tutorial actually starts, uh, this is the tutorial that teaches the player how to use Steve. Actually, let me go back to the Jira task. Uh, the first one, the first tutorial, I, I should have brought this up during it, but the first tutorial uh, went over resources. It teaches the players how to destroy the asteroids. Um, this isn't this isn't really supposed to be a description. It's more of a um, uh, something that I have to make made sure of. Uh, the asteroids cannot um, be missed normally in in normal game uh you if you miss an asteroid it goes down in tier and if if it goes down to tier zero then it just it just dies and you don't get any of the resources out of it uh but in in the tutorial i couldn't allow that to happen um teach the player to explore yeah, yeah uh, again moving the ship around all that fun stuff um is how I taught the player how to explore, but technically I didn't teach them why they need to ex explore yet. And that's what comes in this one. Uh, now, in this one, Steve is the main part of this. Uh, we got to move Steve around. Um, we have to transfer resources and then load this, the resources into the drive. Uh, I did not teach the player how to turn the power on and off. Um, that is actually going to be saved uh, for future. I, sh I should have put that in here, but uh, that is actually going to be a specific kind of tool tip that pops up the very first time they ever see uh, a Shadow Steve, which we do not cover in the tutorial. And then the last one, tutorial events. Uh, 
this one I didn't log very much time in. Uh, it it was placed in tutorial Steve, uh, but it's kind of intermingled with a lot of the stuff that I needed to do with Steve or with resources. Uh, so the time logged didn't get placed into this uh, event. I did put a minute long or just a just a tiny work thing explaining that. But uh, the events are the fires. Uh, Shadow Steve is supposed to be included, but again, that's going to be a later thing. And anything with this little asterisk is stuff that I wanted to add to the to the game before final release, but I didn't have enough time. Uh, so either way, tutorial events is complete, uh, but mainly just for fires. Uh, I, I teach them that hey, fires can spawn and blah blah blah. Which let me go back and you'll you will see. So, anyways, after the little conversation with Steve, it's going to run through a little prompt. We got now have the name. And uh, the first thing I actually have to teach the player is how to go around cameras. Uh, so they're tasked to go to each of the new cameras. They saw this one last time, so this is actually not a prompt here. But any of the other rooms that they did not see in the first one, it's going to give them a little tiny bit of information about it. Oxygen tank is leaking. Okay. The barracks. You can order the human to bed to restore stamina. All right. FTL drive is located here, which is important later. Uh, and then the corridor is just the room that connects all the other rooms together. Now, this is the, actually the last room. So as soon as they click through the very last room, it takes them back to the engine room uh, to do the next task. Resources will pop up. And it's tasking the player that, hey, you can convert these resources into scrap. And it tells them that they have to do this now. So you know, they can choose any one of these. Let's, let's go with oxygen. 10 scrap acquired. As soon as I click that button, negative 10 plus 10 here. Uh, right click the engine. Now that we have scrap, this is the first time we teach the player that they can move Steve. As soon as I right click, it makes a noise, shows the arrows. And you can follow Steve to the location. As soon as he loads that 10 scrap, uh, it pops up some more, uh, again, some more narrative stuff. And then the uh, rest of the HUD it gets unlocked. And a, the oxygen was preset to a certain location. It actually does not go down yet in game, uh, but it is low. And this is where we need, I tell the player, you need to go to the uh, oxygen container in the life support room. So since we already showed this off, uh, I'm hoping they use a little bit of a, a brain power to get back in here. Uh, but either way, they can't get past this until they right click on this and Steve gets over here to actually load the oxygen. Uh, there's actually even a check in here. So if they accidentally clicked this button so many times that they didn't have enough oxygen to put into that machine, uh, it checks if they have less than 10, then give them 10 more. Um, so that this task has to be completed. Uh, and if they are converting it that much, uh, the scrap will go up. And to make sure that they cannot leave the level, if scrap ends up more than 90, because you need 100 scrap to leave the level, if scrap ends up more than 90, then it brings it back down to uh, 80. I should say equal to or more than 90. Uh, because they only need 90 at this point to, to leave the level. So if it, it ends up at 90 or above, it brings it back down to 80. So they can't just click here spot, uh, you know, and get out of the level before it's over. But anyways, uh, now the human can survive longer. And this is where we teach the player the first event. And again, reinforce uh, more movement and more of what Steve can do. It says, find the fire and put it out. I made it real easy and made it in the next room over. Um, they can actually click it from here, but that's up to them. But they right click on it to put the fire out. As soon as the fire goes out, um, it gives some more prompts. And it says, this is where it explains why these fires keep popping up, you know, electrical issues, whatnot. At this point, I need to make sure that they can leave the level and they have enough uh, resources to leave the level. So I gave them Ignite. Ignite can't be used except by the radar itself. Uh, so it's a perfect play, uh, 
thing to give them because the only option they have with it in this tutorial level is to sit here clicking until they have enough scrap to leave the level which is 90 technically uh, but they could use anything they wanted to now at this point it actually does uh, start counting down like oxygen will be going down his stamina is going down um, so at this point they can uh, lose the level but I still wanted to make sure that that was very difficult to do so it takes a very very long time in the tutorial for that to happen uh, just to make sure that they have enough time to to complete the level and they don't die uh, it was explained that once oxygen's out uh, Steve's health will start draining and if Steve or the ship's health goes all the way down then you lose but once they fill up the drive, they can hit uh, the FTL jump button again and select the planet. Oh, I should mention in both tutorial levels, there's actually one planet to choose from. Uh, it's to denote that you you don't have a choice in this matter. Uh, in the normal level, a bunch of planets appear so the player can choose which, uh, where they're jumping to. But in this case, uh, in the final tutorial level, when they press this button, it actually brings them directly into a new game uh, of the actual Steel Vulture uh, gameplay loop. So this is the actual uh, <laughs> start. Um, so anybody who's played through the tutorial before, if they skip the tutorial, it will bring them here automatically. As you can see, oxygen is going down. Um, there should be some stuff here on the radar. Uh, all that, all that fun stuff. Uh, but that is at, uh, that just pressing that last button is how you win the tutorial. So if you want to count that as a win condition, uh, that, that's how you win the tutorial is by completing it. Um, and again, it's very, very difficult to lose uh, or impossible in that first level. It is, is actually impossible to lose in the very first tutorial level. And I did do that on purpose to make sure that the players can get through the tutorial without losing for, no, uh, for an unknown reason yet. Um, oh, actually, uh, this reminds me, um, just to make sure that you can pause during the tutorial, uh, so I will show that off uh, in just a second. New game, play tutorial, rebooting, and there's the pause. Uh, and it does actually pause, so that, that was a sequence, we just paused in the middle of it, uh, and it, it did, see, it paused <laughs> that sequence. But as soon as you unpause, it will take you back. So uh, that is the tutorial levels. And that is the entire month, actually, uh, I've been spending on those two levels, or th four levels turned into two. Um, another task that I have completed is uh, we had a, a major bug that when a fire spawned, the persistent HUD around uh, the camera would stop working. Uh, and we finally figured that out with uh, some help uh, from the professors and the uh, professor's assistants. Uh, but uh, I spent way too long trying to figure it out myself. And then the last half of this was actually with help. So uh, a little more time than I wanted in that one. Uh, but all of these also had a ridiculous amount of time. I always underestimate these tutorials. I mean, if you were to play through that tutorial, even with reading all the script, um, it probably takes, the first level at least, probably takes less than 60 seconds to get through it. Uh, but it took not only these tasks, but from the last sprint, there was another task with probably just about enough time logged into it. So it was a ridiculous amount of time for such a short amount of gameplay. So the amount of hours I spent in the task, um, 
each one of these, uh, or at least these first two tutorials, uh, were about the same time in, in a day and a half or two days. Uh, but we actually created a dashboard that could show each of us how much time we have physically worked, time spent by Asani right here. Uh, so according to this pie chart, I have spent four days, six hours, and that one minute I showed uh, in, in JIRA. Uh, each day is eight hours long. So eight times four plus six, that's uh, how many hours. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure of the actual... Let me let me calculate that real quick, I guess. Uh, let's see, eight times four, 32 plus six, we got 38 hours uh, in the project. Oh, and one minute. You can't forget about that one minute. Um, that's something I prefer to do, but those were my tasks. Uh, and that is everything that I have done uh, this month in the uh, Steel Vulture project. Uh, take care. Hello, my name is Anthony Schroeder, and I'm on uh, Team Pretty Ape. I'm here to do my sprint review video for um, the end of game design balancing. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll open our latest build, build 3.06, and we'll get started. So we'll also... Come on. Turn down the volume. Go back. All right, now we can head on over to my Jira. So everything from in progress forward is things that I've been working on so far on this uh, sprint. Um, we'll just start from the top of done and go down. Uh, the finish gen box generation types uh, is pretty difficult to demo inside of the game uh, because as you can see here, it just says uh, finish the gen box code for the treasure type and the treasure is a pretty rare spawn rate and there's no current way to just debug have a treasure spawn in um, but I spent an hour finishing up that uh, generation type uh, next one that I can actually demonstrate is uh, the limited Z access so we'll go ahead and go back in the game and go in go into the radar and as you can see both the cursor and the ship and everything I can go see out in the world is all on the same 2D plane. Um, there's no uh, nothing on the third dimension up or down because that has been removed for the game for clarity's sake. Uh, next, we have create different generation uh, settings. Uh, this one is also pretty difficult um, to demonstrate, but uh, there's now three different uh, generation difficulties, uh, normal, medium, and hard. Uh, as it goes in increasing difficulty, the space between the gen boxes is increased, um, and the generation percentages are tweaked. Uh, as you can see here in the description, you know, create medium and hard, uh, make the, just the hitboxes for the size, which was done, and tweak the percentages, which was also done. Uh, this was four hours uh, logged in, and I'm not sure if I hit, hit on it before, but the Z-axis took an hour. Um, so next, this one can also be shown. Uh, this was migrating mechanics into the main level. So those mechanics being uh, quick move, scan mode, and torpedoes. So we'll go ahead and demo those. So first would be uh, the quick movement. Uh, if I hit the U button, you'll see uh, it says true in the top right, and I can press in a direction, and the ship will home to the cursor um, the whole time that quick move is activated, and it will only not uh, deactivate if I snap the cursor back to center, or if I make it to where the cursor is during the quick move. Um, this is done so that way instead of using the diegetic buttons where I have to get the cursor into place and then move. This would be used for uh, kind of precise movements, whereas the quick move, I can kind of just continue to, you know, adjust. Um, I can continue to adjust where it is and move there. Uh, let's get this fire pile. Uh, all right. 
Next uh, is the scan mode off and on. So as you can see now, um, when you know the cursor gets close enough to something to scan it, uh, an animation will play where it kind of homes in on that. Uh, if you do not want that to happen, you can switch the scan mode off. So as you can see, the radar cursor is now white and it does not home into anything. So this would be used for a specific placement of the cursor. Um, There's no more fires. Another fire right there. So, moving on, then we have torpedoes. So I'll go ahead and I'll demonstrate torpedoes. Um, so, torpedoes. Uh, if I press the R key or the torpedo key up here, uh, right now I have the swarm torpedo upgrade enabled, and that. As you can see, sends out three um, three torpedoes to the target location. Um, but these can be used for uh, destroying turrets, destroying mines, uh, as well as an alternative way to mine asteroids. Um, Uh, so those are the three mechanics that uh, I migrated in the Steel Vulture. And just for further clarification, the reason why any of these are uh, mechanics to begin with, uh, the quick move would be for, you know, an easier way to move around the map, or if you need to quickly move in a scenario where, you know, a mine appears or you run into a turret that's shooting torpedoes at you, uh, you can quickly move out of the way without having to do too many um, inputs. Uh, next would be the scan mode. This is um, in the game because sometimes you don't need the cursor bouncing around between several objects. Uh, sometimes you need to precisely maneuver it between things, so it's much easier to just be able to turn the scan mode for the cursor on and off. And torpedoes are a thing, obviously, because it's the only way you can destroy enemies, but it's also an alternative way to mine asteroids if you run out of rockets. So those are those three mechanics. Um, and this was a relatively quick um, process because I already had uh, most of these uh, mechanics flushed out, but this took roughly two hours. Next was the thing that I spent the most time on in the um, sprint this uh, week. Uh, it's make asteroids drop materials instead of instantly obtaining them while mining. So as the title of this says, uh, in the prior versions of the project, if you just were to successfully mine an asteroid, um, you would instantly gain its materials. Uh, let's just go back into the main menu and then back into the game, and we'll be able to um, demonstrate that. So here we have an asteroid. We'll lock onto it and go do the quick time event, and we'll quickly, after we do the quick time event, go back to the radar, and we'll be able to see uh, the asteroid has dropped its materials, and the materials kind of, you know, shoot away from where the asteroid was to kind of reinforce that you just, you know, exploded that asteroid, and go fly over them, and that will pick them up. Uh, that's basically the gist of it. Um, however, the actually coding this was um, sort of difficult because I had to learn the, the physics system uh, to send these uh, materials away as they do, I guess sent away. Um, here's a good example of why you would want precise maneuvering sometimes. Get around this anomaly in case it's a bad one. Um, so yeah, that's the, the gist of it uh, for this. And the last thing that I spent a lot of time working on was the upgrades. Now I've logged uh, five hours so far into the upgrades. Um, and this whole list of upgrades is what we want to eventually be in the game. Um, however, a lot of these that were worked on 
uh, were already in the project. They were just sort of shifted. So I'll only be going over the upgrades that I did during this sprint. So we'll just start from the top going downwards for the ones that uh, I actually implemented. So that would be the Swarm Missile, which we've already uh, looked at in the game. That's where uh, I can, you know, fire these three missiles. Instead of normally, it would just be the one that comes out of the center of the ship. Um, uh, next would be the Anomaly Scanner. So normally when you scan anomalies, uh, they don't have the name of the type of anomaly it is. Uh, however, if we go and scan this, you should be able to see it's a dark matter anomaly. Now, normally it would just say, you know, anomalous reading. Um, maybe we can go find another, uh, another anomaly. Looks like we're just flying into an asteroid belt. Don't know if there'd be any anomalies over here. Right, here's one. And as you see, this one's a magnetar anomaly. So there's four different types of anomalies that all do different things depending on whether the ship flies into them or shoots torpedoes at them. Um, so see, this one restored ship health to full. Um, now, going back, so that's the anomaly scanner. Quick move was already demoed. That's another one that was um, added. Uh, and the other three that were added during this sprint are all the double uh, double yield for the each of the resources. So we'll, we'll go ahead and demonstrate that. So let's go this asteroid over here because it's kind of by itself. So as you can see, it's a 24 rocket and 24 ignite. Now as you can see, we're at these values already. Now if I fly into each of these, because the upgrades are currently enabled for the double yield, instead of getting 24, I will get uh, you know 48 added to each up to, um, the reason why it didn't go further is because these resources are capped at a certain amount. Um, but oxygen is fairly low, so let's go try to just find uh, an oxygen. Asteroid, maybe this one will have it in. My rocket ignite. And let's go check this one. These are two. Hmm. Let's do this one even have even though it doesn't mind by it. Alright, this one has some oxygen in it. Okay, here you see here's a good example of why you might want to turn the scan mode off. So that, there we go, we got the oxygen, and as you can see the oxygen that we got was double that which the scanner said it would have, because our yield is now double. Um, so that was for demonstrated for Ignite Rocket and Oxygen. So that would be each of these resource upgrades. Uh, and that's it so far for the upgrades. Uh, you would get them normally through collecting treasure, which is a rare spawning thing in the world. Um, but for demonstration purposes, I had all of the upgrades already on. Uh, so that would be it for the tasks that I worked on uh, in this sprint. Uh, my name has been Anthony Schroeder, and thank you for watching. All right, my name is Vinny Zhang, and I'll be first telling you all the things I did in Jura. Um, the first thing I ever did in Jura was the optimized radar buttons, which did take me six hours to do. Finding icons took about three hours. Um, adding all the buttons in there, creating into the material instance, um, um, putting it all into the right colors. That also took me like three or so hours. So it could be more than six hours, but I only logged six hours in journey. But um, the complete criteria is find different icons, 
fixing different highlights words and the center and center to cursor and the center button uh, those were swapped which I'll be showing you inside the game add another two buttons for the, tor the torpedo and qu uh, the quick torpedo and then and the buttons that did change is uh, we removed the Z axis and Z axis down and Z axis up and then swap the cursor of the center and then the center button and then the center button will make the cursor and this is what it will do um, and then let's see history probably you want to see everything so yeah so that's the that's the optimized radar button and another, another thing I worked on was the balance uh, stamina system which one day which is like eight hours it was six but I did extra two hours um, in class today so two hours so check how long stamina lasts for um, in total um, ran out in about a minute 30 seconds if you're just walking around doing nothing uh, just keep walking around so that's a minute 30 seconds and then see if you can finish the level without using any stem or like going without going to the bed it is possible but usually uh, there will be fire um, but that's not a thing but you can't finish the game without going to the bed and regaining stamina. So that's that um, history. I'm sure you want to see this. And then another bug, which is pretty huge, but it was a stamina bug. Uh, Log seven hours. It's supposed to be six, but did one extra hours just to see um, if it works better so stay on a bug set or starts down a region bug uh, when you're in the bed you click another order really quick uh, Saturn will go all the way up um, until all the way to max and then to, and then it starts to lose stamina uh, but it usually or if you interact with it it will you will just regain stamina and when you leave the bed it will start uh, raining stamina and when you click on all this, uh, it will Santa will continue to go up even without using the bed. And then yes, it's fixed. That was a small problem. And the final thing, it was the general bug test. Um, it wasn't really that big. Um, one of it was um, yeah, right here. First one was the converting O2 into the oxygen tank. Um, and then the HUD didn't show up saying, hey, max, uh, you yeah, have max oxygen or something like that. And then made some changes for the engine tank and move some fire around so the player could see where the fire is. Because when it was a small fire, uh, the player couldn't see it until they look at their screen really closely. So uh, the oxygen, the oxygen will not go into the oxygen tank and when the oxygen is full, the tax of the oxygen is full will not show up. So I'll be showing you if it does show up now. So yeah, uh, that's all for Jira. And now I'll be showing you everything in um, the game. So I'll be opening the build now. So, uh, my name is Fanny Zhang, and this is the build. So, I'll go through all everything in the pause menu. So, volume, go back, and it saves. So, that works. Uh, controls, this is all um, from month one, so it will change in the future. And of course, the main menu also works. So, let's go back to the main menu. So new game, no. So of course right now I'll be first talking about uh, one of the tasks I worked on in Jira. 
The first one, it will be the, the radar. Right here in the radar, it looks a bit more different than the last time. Uh, so right now, there's the torpedo and quick torpedo. Only this one um, is hooked up to stuff. And all these are not hooked up. Uh, only center and this one is hooked up too. And of course, you got to move the radar. And these all work. And then what we did change was uh, when we hit, um, let's go like an asteroid. Uh, this is this used to be moved to cursor. So these are swapped. So now you press this, it will move to um, the thing. And right here, this will be center. So it'll be, you're at the center. And of course, all these icons are different now. And I think they um, are more easy to read. So there's a torpedo. So you hooked up something and then every time you click this, it'll shoot a torpedo. So that is one of the buttons that works and yeah. So that's for one task. So the other task, which is the stamina, which I'll be showing you. But for now, let's go through the level. So this is the bridge. This is the weapons. Um, this is the life support. Um, this is the barracks. And this is engines. And this is the corridor that connects all the rooms together. Uh, you saw that uh, sound that is Shadow Steve, but that's not what we need to do right now. And another thing I did is the oxygen so right now I only have 10 so let's um, get some oxygen um, so I got some stuff so let's see if I could get some more oxygen so now I have 25 oxygen and oxygen oxygen it's gonna keep deplete but um another thing i did change which i'll show you oh there's a fire uh let me get rid of that fire real quick and let me get some more okay i'm sure some of these have some oxygen so protein oxygen some more fire um, but us uh, oxygen here it used to be uh, every time you're at full or uh, you will not uh, regain any oxygen and I'll give you a lot of errors but now uh, you could uh, put in oxygen until it's at 95 and if you put in more uh, it will say oxygen um, tank is full I don't think I'll be able to show you I need um, a rocket so 25, I just need a bit more. I need a bit more. Hope this one. And of course, stamina is going down. So, right, I'll show you um, another thing is the stamina. So, when it reached to um, zero, I just keep walking around. So, it will reach zero. So, now you reach zero, you go super slow. 
So that indicates um, that the player has ran out of stamina, and they are they're fatigued, they're weak, so they have to regain stamina. And now after, um, if you interrupt the bed, uh, it will return their um, stamina back to full. But uh, I think it will be better to show you the oxygen. So if you exit, you will start regain. But the bug, it was uh, you interact, you click something really quick, and then you will start regaining stamina again and again, all the way to max. And after it's max, and you go somewhere else, and then you start losing um, stamina. So that is fixed. So I feel like it will be better to show you. Going to the next level. Let's go to the next level. Everything is you get 10.02 so let's get um, extra O2 so let's check this um, asteroid if there's any oxygen uh, only oxygen okay that's that's good so now I have uh, 60 oxygen so oxygen so back then you couldn't uh, put any oxygen into the oxygen tank, but now um, you can. And if there's extras, it will say oxygen is full, and it does it doesn't consume any oxygen. So yeah. Hello, this is uh, Ben Martinez again. Uh, I'm gonna be showing the wind condition and then. Uh, the reset function for that I have in the game instance. So here we're just about to fill this up. So essentially winning um, is getting to the end of the hard difficulty after um, five essentially levels or iterations of it. So I'm click on that. And here is our win condition. So here, um, you have the option to start over or uh, go to main menu. And for the uh, the game instance reset, um, this is going back to the main menu. So click on this. Brings back to the main menu. And starting a new game sets all of the materials back to default. Uh, Earlier, I had um, some pretty high numbers. One was kind of low after doing some of the conversions, but I don't think I had like 80 or 90 of uh, the other two, but now they're all set back to default. And that is everything that I worked on. I, that I worked on. Excuse me. Uh, thank you for watching.